recording. All right, here we go. Um, did we say what the derivative of sine was? Yes. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. That's it. Okay. Uh, derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Uh, well, you get the practice. All right. Okay, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That's the newest one. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, so that's the only one where that's true. That's the only function where that happens. And by the way, AP loves that function. Except they'll talk about it without telling you they're talking about it. You have to recognize that that's what they're doing. Wait. They'll say stuff like uh, f prime of x equals f of x. Right? Here, if f of x equals e to the x, but they tell you f prime of x equals f of x. Yeah. So it's the only time it equals that. Yeah. Alright. I have a question about that problem. What? I have a question about that problem. Which one? Uh, see, is that where you were on or now? I'm not on any problem. Okay. I haven't started yet. Alright. <coughs> right. Does that mean I edit that out? Alright, anyway, here we go. So, this is an application, a simple application of the derivatives we've got so far. So, let's look at this. So here we're writing the tangent line equation. So most of the time, like there will be one or two questions on the AP test where they just say, what's a derivative? But that's it. Most of the time they're gonna ask you to do something with it. And this is the prime example. So this is the favorite thing they ask you to do, okay? And they're gonna ask you this a bunch of weird different ways. But basically, uh, in order to find the equation of a tangent line, you need a slope and a point. So here they gave you a point. Now you just gotta find the slope. So to find a slope, just take the derivative. So f prime of x, what's the derivative of an x? One. One. one, right? The exponent is one, so you bring the one down, and then subtract one from the exponent. One minus one is zero, x to the zero is one, so it's just one. Okay. And minus four x. And minus four x. Wait, can you do that again? Okay, so just know that derivative of x is one. Well, if I have derivative two x, it'll be two. But then the shortcut, can you do shortcut again? Or explain why it is the case it is? Yeah. So yeah. if I have, so here's my x, right? That's my function. If I take the derivative of that, the exponent, what's the exponent? The exponent is one. So I bring the right one down, down, x, one minus one. So it's one times x to the zero, which is just one. Yeah, I know that, but I'm talking about the Negative 2x squared. I was wanting to do the shortcut of it. Oh. I what is 2 times 2? Four. Uh, 4. What's 2 minus 1? Minus 1. 1. Uh, oh. So it's always the exponent minus 1 and then the leading coefficient times the exponent? Yeah. Uh. Alright, now we plug in the 1. So what is f prime of 1? negative 3. So the equation, the line, is y plus 1 equals negative 3 x minus 1. All I'm using is the point slope form of the line, and that is adequate as an answer. So you can leave that? There are no other directions, so yeah. I'm you can get rid of that. Why is it y plus 1? Okay, the formula is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's the formula for the equation of a line. How do you get rid of the x on the slope? How do I get rid of the x? Yeah, how do you get rid of I didn't get rid of the x. I substituted 1 for x. Right, it's f prime of 1. Uh, All right, yeah. So is the function of something just like f of x equals blah, 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 like the slope? F prime of x is the slope. Really? Really. So what is, so, that might be a dumb question, but what is that negative three represent? Is that just a Where, here? Yeah. 
Yeah. That's the slope of the line. That's the slope of the function at x equals 1. So it needs to be y plus 1 is equal to negative 3 times x minus 1? Because it asks for the equation of the tangent line. So that is the equation of the tangent line. Okay, Kevin? All right, B. You good? Can I go on to B? All right, so I'm rewriting g of x, so it looks like an exponent. So it's x to the 1 half, 2 times x to the 1 half. And when I take the derivative, it's going to be x to the negative 1 half. Did you follow that? Yes. Yeah. Where did the 2 go? What's half of 2? 1. So it's a 1, coefficient of 1. Right? Remember, you multiply the coefficient with the exponent, as Blake said. Just multiply the coefficient with the exponent. 2 times a half is 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. If you were to put that, like, before, if they ask, would it be 1 over the squared x? Yes. So now we have to put it back into a slope formula, or the slope attack. So what's the slope for that? Okay, so plug in 4 into that, right? So what I want to know, what is g prime of 4? So as Matt said, that is the same thing as 1 over square root of x, or square root of 4 in this case. So it's easier in this form to figure it out, instead of in the negative exponent form. Right, Matt said this is the same as 1 over square root of x. Yeah? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. You can't see it? All right. Is that better? All right. So that becomes one half. Okay? Yeah. Can you go over how you turn x to the negative one half to one over x? To one over x. All right. So if I have x to the negative one half, that same thing as 1 over x to the 1 half. you agree with that? Really? Yes. If there's a negative exponent, you change where it is, it becomes a positive exponent. And when I say where it is, right now, it's in the numerator. Put in the denominator, it changes to a positive exponent. That's true. I agree. And then, and then just... x to the 1 half is the same as square root of x. Wow. How do you get y to the 1 half? How do you get who? Y. I haven't gotten it yet. All right, so here, so that's how I got uh, g prime of 4 is 1 half. Right? g prime of 4 is 1 half. Now, uh, Zion asked, well, how do you get y? Well, just plug the 4 into the original. Just plug 4 into the original. So we also need what g of 4 is. g of 4 is 2 times square root of 4, which is, which is 4. These boxes are really small. Mm -hmm. so, so the, go ahead. What, why do we care about the one half? That's the slope. Okay, so the directions were to find this equation of the tangent line. To find the equation of the tan line, tangent line, we need a slope and the point. One half is my slope. The four is my mm -hmm. y value that I need for the equation. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So, find, so if they don't give you a y value and they just give you x equals something, you just plug that into L of X, so if you have a product of number is equal to whatever, like X. Number one. If it only gets, will that ever just give you a Y value? What do you do that? Do the same thing. Plug it in for the Y value, solve for X. That was a little more difficult question, but yeah, that's all you did. All right, let's continue. We still have to find the equation of the tangent line. So it's y minus the y value we just found, so minus 4, equals, what's on here? 1 half. 1 half. x minus. <coughs> x minus. 4. 4. 4. Yeah. Oh, out of space. This is 4. 
So it's y minus 4 equals 1 half. Sorry for that mess. Let me write it again. y minus 4 equals 1 half x minus 4. Do you think that meant sign? Mm. Yeah. We're good? Wait, can you sign it a little bit? You want what? Can you sign it a little bit? No, I don't mind. Can you ever write negative 4 plus y? No. Um, Keep in mind, whoever's grading your paper is going to look at it with prejudice. Like he has an answer in mind. And if you're just going to do that to mess with those people, chances are he's going to make a mistake grading your paper. And generally, you're not going to have a chance to object to it. Right? If it's an AP reader grading your paper and they don't catch that mistake, then you lost the point just because you were being difficult. <laughs> All right. Find the derivative. What is the derivative of the sign? Cosine. All right. Plug in the pi over four. So h prime of pi over four. There's a cosine of pi over four. And somebody said in the back. Square root of 2 over 2. And if I plug in pi over 4 into sine of t, what do I get? Same thing. Same thing. So the equation on my line is y minus root 2 over 2 huh. equals root 2 over 2 times x minus pi over 4. So this is just e to the x. You might ask, what happened to the 1? Yeah. What's the derivative of 1? Zero. 0. Any constant is 0, is that? The derivative of any constant is 0. Wow. That's fascinating. I have a question about that. So the derivative of this x, or any variable, to the, to the 1 power is equal to 1. But don't constants have their own invisible one? No, they have an invisible zero. Okay. All right. So the equation of the tangent line is going to be y minus e equals e times x minus 1. Did you follow that? No. Well, because it's wrong. Wait, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. What did I forget? Anybody notice what I forgot? If I plug one in here, it's e plus one, not just e. Right. So it should be y minus e plus one. I forgot the function was e to the x plus one, not e. So that one's wrong. Why is it an x there is an exponent. The exponent is 1. They gave it to us. Ah, I see it. Without the x value, why is that in the y minus y1? Plug 1 into that. Right? That would be e plus 1. So the y value is e plus 1. Okay. 
Oh, but you usually get one number whenever it goes to the max. That is one number. <laughs> It's just not a pretty number. Although some would argue it is very pretty. I don't think it's pretty. It confuses people. Okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, at what point does the graph of that have a horizontal tangent line? So first, just find a derivative. So. Uh, y prime equals 2x plus 4, right? Remember the function was x squared plus 4x minus 1. The root of x squared is the 2x. The 4x gives me the plus 4. Now, it says at one point does the graph have a horizontal tangent line? So, what is the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. zero. So, that means this has got to equal zero. So you said equal to zero? Yeah, we, somebody already said the answer, negative two. Um, actually, negative two. Right, and at one point does the graph have a horizontal tangent line? We say at x equals negative two. Uh, some might argue when they say point, they want the ordered pair, so let's give the ordered pair. So we want to know what y is when x is negative two. So I'll plug negative two into that. And what is that? Wait, what? What is that? Oh, what is all that? Oh, you four, uh, negative five. Oh, you just played it. Four. So negative two, negative five is the point where it has a tangent, horizontal tangent one. Does it say for the point? It says at what point? Or what points? Right. Well, let me ask you something. Uh, what kind of graph is this? Um, uh, that square graph. <laughs> okay. Can you be more specific or be more descriptive? It's a parabola. Right? A parabola looks like this or like this, right? So there is only one place where it is a horizontal tangent line. I agree. Alright. So in fact, we found the vertex of this parabola. You mean the maximum? Or the minimum? This one is minimum because <laughs> the leading coefficient is positive. That's right. Be smart, <laughs> All right, B. Show that every parabola has a horizontal tangent line at its vertex. We just said that. For a question like that, can you just draw a line, like a picture? Yeah, well, how do you even answer that? That's a good question. In fact, I don't want to answer this question, but now you're forcing me to answer that question. Um, so, if I were to show that every parabola has a horizontal tangent line at its vertex, I think the proof is much more difficult, not difficult, tedious, than this makes it sound, right? So first of all, I would show a generic uh, parabola. There's my generic parabola. Actually, I take it back. Let's use the other one. What's the other form? Something squared plus C. Yeah. A times X minus H squared plus K, right? <laughs> this is the vertex form of the problem. This is the vertex form of the problem. Right. See, so this is... I don't like the fact that you put this here. And because William decided to ask me that question. This is William's fault. Blame William. All right. So y prime, well, i got to do some math first. So it's a times x squared minus 2xh plus h squared plus k. Oh, my gosh. So that becomes ax squared minus 2axh plus ah squared plus k. So all I did was work it out. Now let's take the derivative. Now, in this example, what are my variables? What are my variables in this? A, H, and K. Okay, A is not a variable. H and K are not variables. A, A, H, and K are constants. 
right? Because in this formula, it's only the y and the x are the variables. All right, so now let's work this out. So y prime is 2ax minus 2ah. And all that, all those are constants, so that goes away. Wait. Oh, never mind. You're this is on 2a. Yeah. What did Balin says? No. Oh, is no. it going to ask what the power symmetry? Never mind. All right. So, when is this equal to zero? When is 2ax minus 2ah equal to zero? When you take a 2a out, you get x minus h, right? And a cannot be zero because it's a problem. If a were a zero, it could not be a problem. So it's when x equals h. Uh, and h goes with k, right? So hk is the vertex. And when uh, tangent line is horizontal. Okay. So there is my explanation or proof. Is it literally just a word? Or huh? is it that? It, it's all this. Oh. It, yeah. It's not just this. No, that's not it. That's the conclusion. Okay. So, to answer William's question, can I just draw a parabola and draw the, 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 the tangent line? The answer is no. Would they ever ask something like that on the AP test? No. The AP exam is not a proof test. So why is it on this page? Yeah. For fun. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Uh -huh. I said sarcasm. I think it's silly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ensuring tangency to a given line. Okay. We're going to force something to be a tangent line. Given this function, notice k is a constant. So it's x cubed plus kx, x cubed plus kx, and the line y equals 6x minus 2. This is not a, okay, that's the tangent line. Find the value of k so that the line is tangent to the function. Okay. This they will have on the AP test. Oh, All right, so. Let's find the derivative first. So f prime of x equals 3x squared plus k. Remember, k is a constant. So when I take the derivative of kx, I'm left with k. What is the slope of this line? It's just 6. It's just 6. So the question is, when is this equal to 6? Is that equal sign or a minus sign? Huh? Is that equal sign or a minus sign? Equal. Here? Where? Never mind. So k is a constant, right? Eh? K is a constant. How do you solve that? Through prayer. Because <laughs> I'm looking at it and going, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> you can do a system of right? So k equals 6 minus 3x squared, right? Okay. Now, here's the next question. Uh, Luke correctly pointed out we need system of equations. So where is the other equation going to come from? the other line, or the line. Well, you also know that the graph and the line must intersect. So that means their y values have to be at the same at some point. So we're just going to set them equal to each other. Okay. So we're going to say x cubed plus kx equals 6x minus 2. And then we're going to go, oh, look. K is that, so I'm going to replace the K over here with that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. Uh, <laughs> this is in the homework. So it's X cubed plus 6 minus 3X squared times X equals 6X minus 2. I have a question. Yes? Do you multiply that by the X, the 6 yes. minus 3 squared? Yes. Yes. Is that an equal or a 
All right, so the 6x is going to cancel, and I'm going to get negative 2x cubed equals negative 2. So x cubed equals 1. So x equals 1. Shouldn't be negative one. No, I don't get it. I'll do it. I can't do it now. No, get out. Okay. Uh, tell her, tell her to get out. It's online. It is? Yeah. Get out. Week six, Thursday and Friday. You take the two. Guys, never mind. Yeah, but the cube is one. Actually, just got me. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is all recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it back. <laughs> Alright, so X equals one. Can it be one too? Plug it. Huh? Can it be one too? No. Uh, if you're wondering, can there be other possible solutions? You can do it another way to solve this. You can say x cubed minus 1 equals 0. That factors into x minus 1. x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. This has no real solution. So x equals 1 is the only real solution. Right, negative 1 doesn't work. 1 minus 1 is 0. Plus one is one. That negative plug in negative one does not. Right. Okay. So x equals one is the only solution. Plug the one into this equation. So k equals six minus three times one squared. So that's three. Final answer. Find the value of k. K equals three. K equals three. What's the question of the problem again? Huh? Uh, find the value of k so that these two, one, the 6x minus 2 is a tangent line. Well, that's it. Find k so that's a tangent line. All right. What's up? Yeah. So I plugged it in, I plugged in the one into this equation. I plugged the one into that equation. Yeah. Well, the one I okay, remember we had two equations, two unknowns, right? Yeah. So we had this equation and we had this equation. Those are my two equations for my two unknowns. I did the substitution to solve that equation, gave me x equals one. I plugged the one into the other equation to get k. Wait, I have a question. Where does that x2 minus 1 come from? x what? No, no, no. Right to the, it's down here. Okay. So the question was, are there any other solutions to x cubed equals 1? Can there be another value where, because remember, if you have x cubed equals 1, you're expecting three solutions. So it was a valid question. Okay? And what I did was, uh, there's an alternate way to solve this equation, is by moving everything to the left, which is the x cubed minus 1, and then factor it. But when you factor a difference of two cubes, the trinomial that comes out has no real solutions. You can use the quadratic formula or whatever. This has no real solutions. So to answer the question, are there any other solutions that x equals 1, this is my response, no because the other two possibilities are imaginary solutions. So there was um, x squared equals 1, and then you get x squared. Then it would be plus or minus 1. All right. Did I answer your question? Oh, you were answering my question? <laughs> <laughs> you asked where this came from. Yeah. That was my answer. Oh, okay. Yeah, final answer is K plus 3.
All right. Okay, so this is not related to the homework, but this is a big part of anything that comes up. How are we doing on time? Okay, so that means I'm not doing this. What's the homework again? 90. Uh, 